Hi, how you doing? We're back and we're ready for it all over again. Just before anyone gets offended, that intro was a joke. We're not actually going down. So, morning fellas, welcome back to another Villa on Tour video today. Back with the reviews, Southampton at home, losing 3-1. If you haven't already checked out that video, if you want to watch it, I don't know, give us the view and then move on, because it was absolutely shocking, like, like really bad. But I'm just going to give my quick thoughts on it. Um, I've got a Southampton fan on as well, so he'll give his thoughts um, in a bit as well, so just a different perspective there. So just before we get into the main bit of the video, of course, this video again is sponsored by OneFootball. Thank you very much for that. Guys, link in the description, top link, download the app. Fantastic football app, it's the best out there. You get yourself previews, news from your team. Villa, whatever team, you can choose your favourite team, uh, news articles, you can check the league tables, you probably wouldn't want to do that if you're a Villa fan at the moment because we are in the relegation zone at Christmas which is not brilliant so download one football top link in the description, it's free as well so why not. So Aston Villa 1, Southampton 3, after Sheffield United when we lost there I was concerned but I wasn't overly concerned because I knew that we had the bottom three coming up, after Saturday however I am a, a little bit more concerned because they were 17th at the no, we were 17th at the start of play. They were in the relegation zone. They came to Villa Park, and it seemed like they just played us off the park. I've got the stats here. So these are the stats from the game. Now looking at them, it looked like well, Villa probably had the better of the game. But yes, we had more of the ball, which doesn't happen a lot this season. But look at the shots, shots on target, especially. I know we had none in the Sheffield United game, but I don't remember any like massive ones apart from the goal obviously in the Southampton game. I know Gilbert had one in the first half that, you know, is a comfortable save. I don't remember McCarthy in the Southampton goal having to do anything major. And that's where we're struggling because to be fair, we have scored a lot of goals this season. I know Wesley has a bit firing, but we have scored a lot of goals this season. It's defensively that's the issue. But now we're getting to the point where we're not troubling the opposition goalkeeper and we're still leaking silly goals defensively. It's a recipe for relegation by the looks of it. So three minutes in, John McGinn gets injured and the club said yesterday that it looks like he's going to be out for about three months, um, fractured ankle. I know, um, I don't really know what happened. I think he might have just landed awkwardly from a tackle and then it's all gone downhill from there. Obviously, he brought in a camber on, but they're, obviously, they're just vastly different players. So the whole tactics are just going to go out the window straight away. I don't really know if we have the plays to sort of cope with that. I know Dean Smith is a big fan of Lansbury, but again, different players. And we don't have that many, you know, players in the midfield that are good at carrying the ball, apart from Grealish, but he shoved out on the left-hand side. I'll come on to Grealish later, but midfield, there's no one quite like John McGinn. So again, that's a big point to start worrying. Kieran comes in with a question here. He says, with John McGinn being out for three months, do you think we need to dip into the transfer market for another midfielder? Yeah, like I said, I think... We don't have a lot of money to spend um, in January, whether it will be loans, loans to buy in the summer, something like that. But we can't go splashing the money like we did in um, summer purely because of FFP and things like that. So we're not going to be splashing big. So we're not going to get a midfielder who, who's anywhere near the quality of John McGinn. So... <sighs> First Southampton goal was just a simple ball over the top. Engels has been caught napping. Um, it was a good save from Heaton, but of course that man, Danny Ings, is there to tap in the rebound. Easy goal. That ball over the top. It was like the Jamie Vardy one he scored when we played Leicester. Easy as that. It's just way, way too easy. I say that pretty much after every goal we've conceded lately. Way too easy. The second goal is ridiculous. Corner, great ball in, but still... I think Smith said after the game that it wasn't actually El Ghazi's man. McGinn was meant to be marking him. But McGinn had gone off like 20, 25 minutes earlier. So where's the organisation? Who's that leader on the pitch who's going to be organising that defence from a corner? Good header, easy as that. 2-0, another cross, another set piece that we're conceding in. And is that game over? I don't know. Again, conceding easy, sloppy goals from corners and set pieces as easy as that one was, should not be happening at this level at all. It's, it's really, really bad. So half time came around and we were depressed. I didn't expect us to get back in the game because in the first half we just didn't create anything at all. Um, and then Southampton come out, you'd think, you know, there might be a reaction from Villa at half time. Nope. Again, early goal in the second half. Don't know how many times I'm going to have to say it. Chelsea, Sheffield United, Leicester and Southampton, within five minutes of the restart, they go and score. And that immediately kills whatever Dean Smith has said um, at half-time. It just kills the game itself. The goal itself was a cross shock. 
Um, Nakamba just sticks out a foot. He just looks like he, he's a bit half assed comes off his foot. Engels is in no man's land. He looks lost. Ings, credit, great finish, but he shouldn't even be getting that chance. And from then on, it really is game over. And then in the 75th minute, Grealish with an incredible goal. Fair play. <laughs> The way he stepped up, and I know we rely on him heavily, if anything, we rely on him too much, um, but it's a fantastic goal from outside the box. But, I think, in the, in the past, I think, you know, his downfall has been the fact he hasn't scored enough goals and he hasn't got enough assists, but fair play, this season, back in the Premier League, he's doing so well. 16 appearances, 5 goals and 4 assists, and some of those goals have been something special, honestly. Again, that one on the half volley, looping over the keeper, Fantastic goal, fair play. People saying he's too good for us, but yeah, 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 well, yeah, he is. We are so, so reliant on Grealish. I think the whole Grealish on the left hand side thing needs to change now because as soon as he gets the ball, there's three, four players around him. And when you're out there, you've got limited options anyway. So I think, especially, I think the only thing with McGinn's injury, the only benefit is that it would mean Grealish has to come back into the middle because we don't have the midfield strength in depth you know, to, to swap out McGinn for another midfielder. So Grealish has to come in, whether that's Trezeguet on the right-hand side, El Ghazi on the other side. I think it offers a little bit more balance and Grealish has, you know, a few more options in the midfield. He can create a little bit more and hopefully we see that Grealish that has been playing on the left-hand side, but in the middle. We didn't really create anything in the game after Grealish's goal. Um, I think players to pick out, Engels and Horse at the back look dodgy. I think in the Sheffield United game before, they looked good, especially in the first half, but... Hawes just kept on pumping balls forward and I think when Mings and Engels play together they look good. Um, we saw it when Konza played with Mings, I think Mings feels the pressure because Konza isn't that experienced and he feels you know, that he has to like guide him through games. I think we're seeing that now with Engels because Hawes you know, has played two Premier League games and he's still very, very young. So I think Engels isn't the biggest lead on the pitch anyway, he doesn't talk a lot. So when you've got Hawes next to you who's what, 20, 21, 22, whatever he is, there's a pressure on Engels there to be that leader. I just don't really think that's his character. Gilbert and Target were poor. Um, I think Gilbert has been one of our better players this season, but against Southampton, really bad. <laughs> Louise was absent. Nakamba, when he came on, looks lost. Yes, he can tackle, but passing, really not very good from Nakamba. Horham was quiet again, but I think you've got to keep him in for that creativity. I think he starts against Norwich for me, and you've got to take one of Nakamba or Louise out, so it would be Horahan Grealish in the middle with either Louise. I'd probably start Louise just behind them. Wesley, again, didn't score, but I'd probably say he was one of our most effective players. I thought he had a decent game. Some of his hold-up play was good. Um, I know he didn't get too many clear-cut chances, but like I keep on saying, that's not always his fault. So I think Wesley had a decent game. Fair play to him. He looks lively. He always... He always, you know, tries his best and some of his hold at play was good. So, you know, there's positives there, although he didn't get the goal scoring opportunities. There's a stat here from Matt Mayer. It says, Villa have conceded at least two goals in eight of their nine Premier League matches. If they are to stand any chance of getting out of trouble, that has to change. 100% agree. Something has to change defensively or whether it's three at the back. We have the players to play three at the back, but I just don't see that. It's normally a sign of panic, isn't it, when you go three at the back. I know Bruce did it a few years ago at Villa when he bought Samba, Chester and Terry together that was never going to work. Um, I know we have the players too when Mings comes back potentially but I just don't see it happening. Brenton says here the team looks tired and mentally fatigued. There's a lack of leadership on the field and no alternatives to freshen the team up. Good point. Looking at the bench no real standout options to come on and actually make an impact. There's no leadership there without Mings especially Engels is like I said quiet on the pitch and Hawes is very inexperienced at this level so there's not a lot there, apart from Tom Heaton, you could probably say. So it's time for Dan from the Saints View to give his views on the Southampton game. So Dan, take it away, mate. Yes, guys, at Villa Until, my name is Dan. I'm from the Saints View. Max has asked me to give you guys a bit of a rundown on the Southampton side of things after yesterday's massive win for us. 3-1 at Villa Park. Huge, absolutely huge. Out of the relegation zone, three points clear of it. I know we've got a tough game on Boxing Day and you guys have a bit more of a favourable fixture run coming up over the next few weeks. But we just we just have to be picking up points at the moment. Uh, and you guys are the same, you know. I'm, I was quite shocked at how poor Villa actually were. You know, no disrespect, but I thought we dominated the game in pretty much every area. You know, the scoreline, shots on target. Possession, to be fair, I think you had more. But, you know, we used the ball a lot better. And that's not really something we've seen too much of this season. I know we've got five wins, but that's five out of what? Are we on 17 games now? 18 games? So, 
We need, we just need to see more of it, to be honest. It's an inconsistency thing. You know, that was probably our best performance of the season yesterday. You know, having Ings in form is it, not, it's something we've never had before. We haven't really had a striker in that good form since, I mean, James Beattie, I guess, but even Matt Letitia, the second highest goal scorer in the league going into Christmas. You know, I, I, I wouldn't have had a clue. I would never have in a million years thought that would have been the case at the beginning of the season that Danny Ings would be second top goal scorer in the Premier League going into Christmas. But yeah, um, pretty much every single one of our players did well, I thought. You know, Jack Stevens was excellent once again at the back. Alex McCarthy had a pretty good game in goal, pretty quiet to be fair. Um, and yeah, I think Aston Villa just needed to ask more questions of us to be honest. You know, you're at home, you've got to go on the front foot. I do think you're unlucky with the McGinn injury, you know, that seemed to sort of slow things down a little bit for you, I guess. Um, but really impressed with Grealish here and there. I thought his goal was excellent. Not much we could have done about that. But yeah, going into Christmas with three points out of the relegation zone for us. We're very happy, but for you guys, I'm sure you're down. But Norwich and Watford coming up next, I believe, for you lot. That, that's got to be six points. If you want to stay in this division, you've got to get six points from that. Anyway, thanks for having me. Go check out the Saints. I'm sure Max will leave my links. See you soon. Have a great Christmas, guys. So that was Dan from the Saints View. If you are a Southampton fan, very good content over there. Go and subscribe to them. Link in the description to the Saints View YouTube channel. Just a few questions to end on here from Twitter. Ray says, would you like to see Benteke back at the club? I know I would. No. Sam says, should we recall Andre Green? No. So yeah, Christmas in the relegation zone. Not ideal. Norwich at home on Boxing Day. I know they're going to come and play football. That's what they do. They're going to be coming to, to get the win. The point, again, isn't good enough for them. It's not good enough for us. So they're going to come wanting the win. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be tough. Watford beat Man United on Sunday. And, yeah, the limbs looked really good there. <laughs> So that's not going to be an easy place to go, especially with a new manager, Dini, scoring his first goal in a while. It's not looking good, is it, for Villa at the moment? We need to get for even four points from the next two games. Probably isn't enough. If we don't beat Norwich, that that is, is really, really bad. And that is where I am going to start turning and really start worrying. So leave your thoughts ahead of the Norwich and Watford game in the comments below. What, what do we need to change? What does Dean Smith need to do? Don't start with all these Dean Smith out comments because realistically, those people who are saying that, where did you think we were going to be at the start of the season? Smith out, like some of our fans are really fickle. I'm not really having any of it. Like, of course, you're entitled to your opinion, but not for me. So if you have enjoyed this video, please do leave a like, subscribe if you are new. The spot on the channel has been really good recently, so thank you very much for that. Stay tuned for the Norwich video. Hopefully, we should be getting a three points on Boxing Day. Hope you all have a brilliant Christmas. Um, yeah, just to forget about the villa for a bit um, until Boxing Day. So thank you very much for watching and up the villa. <laughs>